Now, I have some surfaces here. I have a rubber surface. I have a steel surface. And I have a glass surface. I also have three balls. I've got a rubber ball, a metal steely, and a glass marble. And I'm going to bounce rubber on rubber, steel on steel, glass on glass, and I want you to predict which will be most elastic. Now, before we start, how would you recognize an elastic collision? If I were to drop it from this height, what would happen in a perfectly elastic collision? It'd go right back, It'd go right back up to the same height. So, with your clicker, tell me, which is going to be the most elastic? <coughs> okay, last call. Okay, rubber on rubber. Okay, let's do it. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wait a minute. I tricked you. <laughs> Turns out years ago, uh, one of my colleagues spent some of your tuition money on this set of balls that were in an educational supply catalog, and they're called the happy ball and the sad ball. And you can tell which one's a happy ball and which one's a sad ball. I was messing with you. <laughs> okay, here's the happy ball. Oh, that's still not so... Okay, here's the metal on metal. Even less. Here's the glass on glass. Whoa. That's the most elastic. And the point of this demo is that we use the word elastic in physics to mean something completely different than we use in the word for an everyday life. In everyday life, we use the word elastic to mean malleable, bendable, and like a rubber band. But elastic in physics talk means we don't lose the energy. And when you, when you have something that can compress, that can change shape, that's rubbery, well then you have that energy of deformation. You lose some of your mechanical energy. This glass on glass was the most elastic collision precisely because it doesn't deform, because the glass is very rigid, and so none of the energy goes into energy of deformation. Now, 